Does your live stream sound like this? The sun of heaven rose again. Oh, trample down, where is your sting? Do you want it to sound more like this? Hello, I'm Stephen Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. This video is part three in a series called Make My Live Stream Sound Better, where we're gonna do just that. In the first video, I made the case for why you need an isolated separate mix for your live stream. In the second video, I walked you through all the equipment you need and how to set it up. And now in this video, we're gonna start setting up the DAW on our computer for live mixing. We're gonna be using Reaper as our DAW for live mixing. There are other DAWs out there that will work. Lots of people use Pro Tools or Studio One or Logic, but I think Reaper gives you the best bang for your buck. For one, it's incredibly stable and reliable, and it's very flexible, meaning it lets you build the functionality that you want with it rather than having to follow the workflow that some of the other DAWs force you into. And of course, it's also the cheapest of all the DAWs out there at $60 for nonprofits. And what I've found is that when it comes to mixing, you know, not, not composing or writing music, but just purely mixing, your DAW really is just a vessel for your plugins. The sound we create comes from our plugins. So the flexibility of Reaper to create just about any structure and routing for that works really well. There are links to download Reaper down in the description of this video, as well as all the links to the equipment you need to set up the system I showed you in my previous video. Any DAW you choose is software that was meant for recording and mixing multi-track audio, but we're gonna use it as a live mixer, which is something it wasn't necessarily designed to do which puts a burden on us to be aware of a few gotchas. Things like watching our CPU usage to avoid audio dropouts, being aware of plug-in latency and time alignment, and also the fact that the solo operation works differently in a DAW than it does on a live mixer. So we'll be looking at those things as we go along. Once you've installed Reaper, if you want the graphics to look the same way that mine will in this video, go to the Options menu, Themes, and select default 5.0. I'm just used to the way everything looks in this theme and can find things faster. Different themes just look different, but the functionality of Reaper is the same. Also, before we begin, if you are using Dante Virtual Sound Card, be sure that's started, otherwise you won't get audio into Reaper. I'm gonna start with a completely blank Reaper and walk you through the entire setup to the point that we'd be ready to do a sound check and start adding our plugins and mix something. For this video, we'll use a hypothetical worship band where I have 32 channels coming from my front of house console that have been patched to this computer through Dante. 10 channels for drums, a bass guitar, an acoustic guitar, two stereo electric guitars, stereo synth, two channels for piano mics, a violin, four vocals, and to fill out the remaining 32 channels, that leaves me with seven crowd mics. The first thing we need to do is configure Reaper to use Dante as its audio interface so that we can bring in our audio channels. If you haven't watched my previous video in this series, things will make a whole lot more sense if you go watch those first because we're gonna pick up right where we left off in the last video where we patched Dante to this computer. In Reaper, go to the Options menu and select Preferences, and under Audio, go to the Device page. For Audio System, select ASIO, and then for ASIO Driver, select your Dante device, either Dante Virtual Sound Card or the Dante PCI card. For First and Last, you define the range of channels you wanna use for your audio device. If you're using Dante Virtual Sound Card, Configure it to use the number of channels you will actually be using. There's no reason to waste resources on your computer by configuring more channels than you actually have. So in Reaper, we'll usually set this first and last to the entire channel range of inputs that we have available. First to input one and last to input 32. Now I'm gonna add 32 channels here in Reaper. To do that, we'll press Control T, which adds a track 32 times. 
Now we have our 32 channels, but nothing is routed to them yet. There are multiple ways in Reaper to route inputs to channels. We could go through each channel and click this pull down option here and select our Dante input for each channel. But there is a better way to do this across multiple channels all at once. Go to the view menu and select routing matrix. Initially, the routing matrix will open up docked at the bottom here, but I prefer to have it floating so I can expand it out big enough to see all my channels. To do that, right click on its tab and uncheck dock routing matrix in Docker. This view can be confusing at first. The top part with these X's in a row are channel sends, so routing channels to other channels. We'll come back to that in a minute. What we want to do is scroll down until we see our Dante inputs here on the left and our 32 channels we created across the top. Just like we did in the last video in Dante Controller, click in a box to create the routing from a Dante input to a track in Reaper. And to start with, we'll go one to one just like we did in Dante Controller. You can just click and drag and it will create that patch. Just keep holding down until it ends up in the right place. And here 32 to 32, we ended up in the right place. Okay, so now audio is getting to our channels from Dante. Close the routing matrix and to see audio on the meters or hear what's coming in, we need to arm the channels for recording. Otherwise it's in playback mode to playback something that was already recorded on the tracks. But if we arm a track, we can see the input audio coming from Dante. To quickly do this for all of our tracks, select a track by clicking on it and then press Control A to select all of our tracks and now we can press the arm button and all of our tracks are now armed. One additional thing I like to do since I'm only gonna be mixing, I'm not gonna be recording, with all my tracks still selected, I'm gonna right click on the arm button and select record disable input monitoring only. And we'll see it looks a little different with a dot in the middle now that tells us we're in the record disabled mode. The reason I do that is if someone accidentally hits the record button, nothing is really gonna get recorded and I don't end up using system resources or filling up my hard drive. Now let's name our tracks. We can use the exact channel list coming from our front of house board because everything is still patched one to one in the order it's being sent from the console. To name a track, double click this empty area above the pan knob to edit the name of the track. Our first channel is the kick drum. You can press enter to end editing, but you can also press tab and you'll start editing the text for the next track. Now let's create some of our internal routing within Reaper to buses or groups. Here we're starting to make some mixed decisions. Not only does using a bus make mixing easier, I can use one fader to control a whole group of channels. For instance, all the drums or all my vocals. But also for most of these channels, I'm gonna be applying processing to the group as well. One of the things we wanna do in our live stream mix is reduce the amount of dynamic range. We want to send a consistent volume level to our stream, and one of the strategies we'll use for achieving that is multiple stages of compression. A compressor is just a volume control. What it does is reduce volume peaks so that we can bring the overall average volume level up without our channel distorting. And using several compressors and stages is going to sound better than just one compressor that's really having to bang away at the signal. So we'll compress on our channels, sometimes even with multiple compressors on the channel. Then we'll compress audio in groups through a bus. And finally, we'll have some compression on our master bus. And all of that together will give us a nice consistent volume level that's loud enough to send to our stream. To create a bus in Reaper, you create a regular track and then set up its routing to receive audio from the channels you want to be a part of that group. Select the last channel and press Control T to add a new track after it. And I'm gonna do that eight times to add eight more tracks for our buses. I'm creating eight buses mainly because it maps nicely to a hardware bank like this Behringer X-Touch that has eight faders. There's really no reason to limit yourself to eight buses in Reaper. You can create as many as you need for your environment. I'll name these drums bass, electric guitars, acoustics, synth, 
piano, vocals, and AR or audience response. The convention I use when naming is for individual channels to be lowercase and buses are all uppercase. That's just my preference. It's how I label my console at front of house and how I set up Reaper. I also like to color code my channels. This is again purely my convention that I use that helps me find things quickly. You can use this or go with something that works for you. To color code your channels, select all the bus channels, right click on one of them and select track color, and then set tracks to custom color. And for buses, I use this primary blue color. Then all my audience response mics, I'm gonna make them yellow. All my vocals green. Instruments orange. And for drums and percussion, I use this cyan color. Using these colors just makes it really easy to scroll through the mixer and find what I'm looking for. Okay, now we can create our routing to the buses. Right now, all of our channels by default are having their audio sent directly to the master bus, but we want them to route their audio through the bus channels that we created. To do that, we'll go back to our routing matrix. All of our channels are listed here on the left, and all of the channels again across the top. When you click in the box, we create a connection sending audio from the channel on the left to the channel at the top. But the first thing we need to do is unroute all of our channels except for the violin that won't go through a bus from the master. Just click and remove these boxes under master. Then for all my drum channels, I can come over to the drum bus and create that route. You can click and drag and if you misclick and create a bad route, just click it again and click delete or you can hold down Alt and click and it will immediately remove the route. And now I'll go through and create the appropriate routing for all my channels to their respective buses. Once you have your routing set up, it's probably a good time to go through and just verify everything is working the way you expect. I like to do that by soloing a bus and if I listen now, I should only hear the drums and I could go through and check that on all of my buses. While we're on the topic of routing and soloing, let's talk about creating a solo bus. One of the problems we face when using a DAW for live mixing is that the solo button is destructive to our master mix output. Meaning if I solo one of these channels, it mutes all the other channels and sends only the solo channel to the master output, which is what is feeding our live stream audio. So our viewers will hear that solo channel as well, which is not what we want. That's the functionality you'd want for a DAW recording and mixing in a studio, but it's not how we want a live mixer to work. There is a workaround that will allow us to use solo like we would normally in a live mixer, but it does have some drawbacks and side effects that I'll show you, and it just adds a layer of complication and understanding that the operator has to have. To be honest, for all the years we've been mixing in a DAW here at our church, I've gone without using this solo bus workaround, and our operators just know that when we're actually live, they can't solo any channels. We do all that type of work during sound check and rehearsals. So I'll let you weigh the advantages and disadvantages of having a solo bus if you want to implement it or not. To make this work, the first thing we have to do is go to the options menu and select preferences. And here under audio, we'll go to the mute solo page and uncheck the solo defaults to in place solo. Click OK, and now we need to create a new alternate master bus to send our mix out to our video on. Create a new track, Control T, and I'll call it Live Out. And I'm gonna make the color of this channel red. Now right click on the solo button and select Solo Defeat. What all of that has done is set up Reaper so that when we solo a channel, this channel's mix won't be defeated or muted or overwritten by the solo operation. It will keep getting the mix it is sent. 
So now what we need to do back in our routing matrix is route everything in parallel to both the actual master output and our new live out track. In the routing matrix, I want to unroute the live out from going to my master bus and then send all my buses to the live out as well. And then of course my violin, which doesn't go to a bus, will go to both master and live out. Then here in the output section, we'll keep the master output going to Dante 1 and 2 and we'll route our live out to Dante 3 and 4. Then we'll need to go back to Dante controller and change the route of our AVIO device that is going to our live stream video to get its mix from Dante 3 and 4. So now our speakers are getting their mix from the master output on Dante 1 and 2 and the live stream is getting its mix from the live out channel on Dante 3 and 4. So now in theory this is all set up and should work. If I solo an instrument, I'll solo the violin, you can see that I'm hearing the violin on my master output, which is now my monitoring output, that's going to my speakers, but the live out mix that's going to my video stays intact. But there is a reason I picked the violin to demo this, because there is still a problem. It doesn't work on channels routed to buses. If I solo a vocal channel, I won't hear anything. That's because we've had to remove the solo in place functionality. The workaround for that is to solo at the bus level. So this solution gives you the ability to solo channels that are routed directly to the main outs, and you can also solo a bus and hear the whole group together. And one more caveat or drawback to be aware of is that any master bus processing we apply, we have to duplicate on both the master and the live out which means there is greater room for error when we make changes to the processing because you have to update that change in both places. Otherwise, what we're hearing on the master out won't be what's happening on the live out. So the question is, is it really worth it to set up the solo bus? I kind of already gave away my answer, and that is we don't use the solo bus workaround here at our church. I don't think having solo capability is worth the headache and complication. And I think this turns out to be kind of like the whole gain control issue. When we first started mixing in a DAW, you wouldn't believe how many times I heard people who had never mixed live in a DAW themselves freak out about the fact that you don't have gain control in the DAW, so obviously it'll never work. Well, as it turns out, proper gain structure is proper gain structure. Once it's set for a channel, it works in your DAW just like it does out in the room. The whole gain thing in practice turned out to not be a big issue. And I feel the same about solo. Well, yeah, it would be nice to have, and I keep making this feature request of Reaper. The reality is when you get to actually mixing live, you're not mixing in solo. You listen to the whole mix. If you make it a part of your normal workflow to take care of things that need soloing during sound check and rehearsal, the need for solo kind of becomes not that big of a deal in practice. So that's just my two cents. For the sake of simplicity in this example, I'm gonna undo all of the solo workaround here in my setup, and we're gonna move forward without it. So now we've created the structure in Reaper for our mix. We have all of our audio coming in and getting routed where we want it through our buses. In the next video, we're gonna pick up right here and go through channel by channel and insert our plugins and get this mix sounding the way we want it. Until next time, bye.